Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. This is the pilot episode of Math 7. We're in Module 1, Lesson 1. An experience in relationships as measuring rate. Okay. So we did a class activity yesterday and I did the activity and what I did was I had the modules that I was handing out because it was the first day of school and I had them in a stack and I asked for a volunteer to pass the modules out. And I did this without telling them that they were being timed and I timed them with my phone and it took them 34 seconds. And there were, I, let me see, I think there were 12 in the class. There were 12 students in the class and it took 34 seconds to pass out the papers. I'm just going to set up the, first, the scenario here and then we'll go back up and look at the uh, key terms. Okay, so after I did that, then I made the students aware that I was recording them and I wanted to, and I asked them to pass the modules all back in, ask for another volunteer to pass them out. And of course, now that they know they're being timed, they're gonna to try to do it as quickly as possible and we did it a second time and then a third time. So that is the scenario here. So now let's go back to key terms up here from grade six ratios and unit rates. And it says a ratio is an ordered pair of numbers which are not both zero, not both zero. So in other words, one could be zero, the other can be zero, but they both cannot be zero at the same time. A ratio is denoted A with this colon and then B. And to say the colon, you usually say the word two. So it's A, to B to indicate the order of the numbers. The number A is first and the number B is second. So we can't rearrange them. And then the next thing says two ratios A, B, and C, D are equivalent ratios if there is a non-zero number C and in class I called it a K just so that there weren't a lowercase C and a capital C here such that C equals K times A and D equals K times B. For example, two ratios are equivalent if they both have values that are equal. So let me um, extend this page a little bit here and see if I've got some room down here to write. And I'm going to explain to you what that is saying. So what it says is the ratio A to B equals the ratio C to D. If there is some number K that we multiply A by, it's equal to C. So it said C equals K A and D equals K B. Okay, so if I go back up here, that's all right here. C equals K A and D equals K B. And I'm going to explain to you what that means. So let's just over here say A equals some value, B equals some value, C equals some value, D equals some value, and K equals some value. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is assign a value for A. And let's just say it's 4. And let's make B 5. So it's 4 and 5. I can't just make up values for D and C because they are dependent. They depend on what A, K, the product of A and K are. And D depends on the product of K times B. So if I say A is 4 and B is 5, we're OK. We're saying what A is. We're saying what B is. Now, if I tell you, let's use K to equal 3, I can now find C and D with these three givens, and let's do that. So C equals K, which is three, times, okay, so now K is three, A is four, so I'm going to put a four here. So therefore C is three times four, so therefore C is 12. So now I'll put 12 here, let me change colors. C is 12. All right, so now I'm going to do the same for D. D equals my k which is 3 times b which is 5 so d equals 15 all right so now i know d is 15. okay so you're probably wondering wow that's a lot of work just to explain this one sentence but i find it very important that this explanation is explained because well this explanation this formula or this rule is explained all right so what they mean is if we have this, this ratio right here, and we multiply it by some k, which is this one here, they will still be equal. So what that means is 
a to b is now 4 to 5, and it is equal to a times k and b times k. So that would be the ratio of c to d, which is 12 to 15. So in other words, all this means is if I take a number such as 3 and multiply it by 4 and multiply it by 5, 4 times 3 is 12, 5 times 3 is 15, the new ratio is equivalent to the original. So multiples of ratios are still equivalent. Okay, so that's what this means right here. Okay, moving on. A ratio relationship between two types of quantities, such as 5 miles per 2 hours, can be described as a rate, i.e. the quantity 2.5 miles per hour. That whole thing is the rate. That is rate. So that will go here. The numerical part of the rate, just the numerical part, is called the unit rate. And in this case, it's just the number 2.5. That is the unit rate. And that will go here. Okay. So now we're getting back to that scenario we were talking about. And I had them pass out their modules. And 12 modules got passed out in 34 seconds. So the ratio of number of papers passed to time. So 2 means a colon. Number of papers passed is before 2, so it comes first, so it's 12. And time 34 is after, so my ratio is 12 to 34. Okay? Here you could also use the word TO here. All right. So then we have to find the rate. Well, in order to find the rate, what we're doing is we're taking the first ratio value and dividing it by the second ratio value, 12 over 34. Okay, so I brought the calculator out. So this means that we passed out 0.35, I'll just round to the two decimal places, 0.35 papers per second. Okay, 3.5 papers per second. The unit rate, remember, is just the number. So the unit rate is 0.35. Okay, so then I said, we're going to pass out these 12 papers again. And they did it in 16 seconds this time. So the ratio of the number of papers passed to the time is 12 to 16. I'll write it with the word TO this time, because that's correct as well. And then 12 over 16 equals 0.75. I can do that without a calculator because it reduces to 3 over 4. So 0.75 papers per second on average. Okay? And the unit rate is 0.75. And then finally we got a third volunteer and they did it really quickly. And I think they did it in, I think, 10 seconds. And so the ratio was 12 to colon or TO 10 and 12 divided by 10 is 1.2 papers per second and the unit rate is just that 1.2 okay so that's what that whole activity was set to do figuring out what rate means and what unit rate means. You need to know that unit rate is just the number, and rate means that number using a unit of measurement, papers per second. Okay, example two, our class by gender. Okay, so here's example two. Class by gender. So I have two classes for Math 7. And my first class, there is one boy and seven girls. So the ratio of boys to girls is 1 to 7. The second class has five boys and 11 girls. So that is a ratio of 5 to 11. The whole seventh grade, so let's just assume these are all seventh graders. There is one other class by a different teacher, plus there's some others. 
but let's just use my two classes and assume that's the whole seventh grade. So then all we're asking is number of boys would be six, number of girls would be 18, and therefore the ratio of boys to girls would be six to 18. Now here it says to create a pair of equivalent ratios by making a comparison of quantities discussed in this example. So when I asked students to do this in class, um, they were kind of stumbling. They weren't sure what this question was asking. So I asked them to try to break down this question and make sense of it. So it says create a pair of equivalent ratios. Okay, so right there, pair, everybody knows is two. And equivalent means there's an equal sign. So I know I have two ratios. So something to something <laughs> equals equivalent another ratio with some value to something. So that's what this means. Create a pair of equivalent ratios by making a comparison of quantities discussed in this example. So you could pick any one of these three quantities. I'll just choose the first one, which is one and seven. And I'll say the ratio of one to seven, that's this one here, is equivalent to, and I will double it. Multiply one by two and get two. Multiply seven times two and get 14. So there is a comparison of two equivalent ratios. Exercise one, which is the better buy? There are two ways to do this and I'm going to show both. Okay, Value Mart is advertising a back to school sale on pencils. A pack of 30 pencils sells for $7.97 whereas a 12 pack of the same brand cost $4.77, which is the better buy. So I'm gonna put a 30 pack here and 12 pack here. Okay, and we're going to write the prices of these. That's what we need to find. The price of the 30 pack, the price of the 12 pack. So I'll just leave that there and we'll work down here two different ways to get this answer. So the price of a 30 pack and the price of the 12 pack and determine which one is cheaper. All right, so the pack of 30 sells for 797. So you could say 30 is to 797 as 12 is to 477. Okay. We could set up a relationship for first. Uh, so we would say $7.97 per 30 pencils. Okay? For every or per 30 pencils. And we will also I'll use green for the 12 pack. So then we would say $4.77 per 12 pencils. Okay. Well, there's two ways we can do this. The one way is find out how much one pencil costs. And in order to do that, it would ju just be taking the total number of pencils you're buying and divide the cost by that number. So I'm going to divide 30 by 797. And when I do that, I'll use the calculator. 7.97 divided by 30 equals 26.6 cents. So let's just say 27 cents. So if I come back here, that will be 27 cents. Okay, so a 30 pack, they are 27 cents each. The 12 pack is the price of the pencil divided by the total number of pencils. And 477 divided by 12 is, just to save time here, I'll use the calculator, 4.77 divided by 12 is 39.75, or so let's say 40 cents, approximately 40 cents. So now we know that the 12 pack are 40 cents each. So the question says, which is the better buy? 
So I would answer this question by saying B better by is the 30 pack because they are 13 cents cheaper than a pencil in the 12 pack. Okay. Okay, so the better buy is the 30 pack because a pencil is 13 cents cheaper than a pencil in the 12 pack. Okay, the other way we could do this is we could take and say 12, there are 12 pencils in one pack. If I have two packs of 12, I would have 24 pencils. If I had three packs of 12, I'd have 36. If I had four packs of 12, I'd have 48. And if I had five packs of 12 pencils, I would have 60 pencils. And then if I had one pack of 30, that'd be 30 pencils. And if I had two packs of 30, that'd be a total of 60 pencils. So now I can, I can find out how much 60 pencils would cost in 12 packs and how much 60 pencils would cost if I bought two 30 packs. So if I buy five 12 packs or if I buy two 30 packs, I'm still getting 60 pencils. So I know that the 12 packs are 477. So I could say $4.77 times five packs equals, and five times seven is 35, carry the three, five times seven is 35, carry the three, five times four is 20, plus three is 23 dollars and 85 cents for 60 pencils. Okay, so I found how much 60 pencils would cost. Now if I find out how much 60 pencils cost here, it would be the price of a 30 pack is $7.97. So I'd say $7.97 times two packs to get up to 60 will equal seven times two is 14, carry the one. Nine times two is 18, plus one is 19, carry the one. Two times seven is 14, plus one is 15. So the price of 60 pencils in the 30 packs is $15.94 per 60 pencils. Okay, so either way you do it, you, do, you can clearly see that the 30 packs are cheaper than the 12 packs. Okay, two ways to do that problem. And that is the end of lesson one. Go do your problem set.